Now we move on to the second part of P3, which is the design specification itself. So for this one, we're talking about the game that you're going to actually make and all the documentation, the paperwork that you need to produce for this game. This uh, is from the teaching part of the specification, the teaching materials, and it's actually very useful because it gives you a really good list of what needs to be included in this part. It looks like a massive list, but the good news is you'll recognize all of these from either P1 or from some of the tasks that you've done uh, for Unit 6. So let's run through these one by one to make sure you understand what they are. So the first part is you're going to need to think about the game elements that you'll need to include, um, such as navigation. What's going to be the way you'll navigate in your game? How is the scoring going to work in your game? What about movement? What about the interaction, the control, keyboard, which is what you're probably going to be using, I imagine. How do you convey information? Now, the conveying information part, which I want to talk about a little bit, um, this part here, that's really important because it's one of the fundamental stipulations of the brief that you convey some educational information. The game that you produce is supposed to have some education to do with one of the campaigns. So that's the place where you should put in and explain what the education that you're going to include there will actually be. Is it going to be that deforestation is happening at this rate? Is it going to be that this is what you can do to uh, reduce global warming? So whatever it is, those key messages need to be in that part. So you've talked about navigation, scoring, how your characters move, how the player interacts with the screen. You don't have to include sound, but if you do include sound, you'll need to explain what it is and why that sounds there. What about levels? Now you only need to actually incorporate one level into this game. However, you should also say if there will be further levels and what will happen on them. You won't have to develop them, you won't have to produce any kind of visuals for them, but an explanation of how the game would progress beyond this were you to go into final production, that would be helpful. Enemies or NPCs, talk about them. Um, is there any degree of problem solving that will happen in the game? If so, explain what it is. The next area to think about is the interface design itself. And we'll have a look at some examples uh, in a moment. But key considerations will be the layout, what it'll look like, the color palette, what colors are you going to use, um, what text will you use, the font, the text style, um, how will sound be used, the stage or the scene, and talk about the actions, the menus, the calls to action, the buttons. How will that all appear? So you're going to need to make a simple prototype to show how this will actually appear in the final game. And your options are to take out a pen and paper and to draw it, or to use your game design software and then to run a screen print. Either will work well. You would be getting ahead of the game if you actually started to make the game and produce some simple designs in the game design software, but either works perfectly well uh, for the purpose of the design spec. The next area of focus is stage design. Now stage design may be the same thing as your interface design, but your interface is, is primarily if you're using a more complex uh, game development software. So it may be that you're simply playing on one screen and you're going to be using keyboards, in which case the stage and the interface will be very similar. Um, then we've got character generation. So you need to develop your characters, your NPCs um, in some form. Now it says bitmaps or wireframe. So either you can create this in the app itself that you're going to use, or you can get out your pens and your pencils and your paper and take a photograph of it and submit those. But either way, you will need to uh, to submit your characters. So that's the overview. That's the list of things that you need to incorporate in the design specification. So let's move on now and look at some examples of what we've seen in the past. Um, points. People were, and this was a one that was done, I think, two years ago. A student had put in that they were going to pick up bananas. I think this was to do with orangutans and they were going to pick up apples and they gave different levels of points. Here's a character made by a student a few years ago. I think this character's name was Steve and he was an eco-warrior. Now don't be concerned if your level of, uh, of art isn't quite up to this because this was uh, equally acceptable that was produced around about the same time. 
Um, I'm not entirely sure what this NPC on the left uh, was, but he was supposed to be very scary. And on the right hand side, that's probably about my level of art there, so it, it doesn't matter if it's not artistically brilliant. The fact is they've got a role and you've got your characters and you've got your NPCs. Here you can see a stage design from a previous uh, year and you've got the main character down here. The main character is quite small, he or she, not quite sure. Um, and then you've got some, uh, some obstacles that uh, the character's got to overcome here and another obstacle there that looks quite painful and then I think in terms of achievement they had to pick up this banana but obviously that developed over time but this is what was submitted as part of uh, as part of the design process all right so I hope that helps to give you an idea of of the sort of area that you need to work in for this design uh, this one that you'll see next is again uh, I guess even simpler in some ways, but was more useful to this student as a starting point to actually sketch the sketch out the uh, the the design, but also to think about some of the uh, some of the ideas that he was going to incorporate as he went along. Twenty percent of China uh, covered in the forest. Game will progress through each uh, throughout one level, and you've got down here uh, level one plant trees, level two dig hole level three dig hole and then add water and in fact this student in his reflection at the end of it in d2 wasn't able to make the game with the same complexity that he was actually planning here but that's all part of the process you aren't professional game designers so some things that you plan will work some things that you plan won't work and some things that you want to do now actually won't end up in the in the final prototype that you create and some things will be in there but won't work quite as you imagined and that's all part of the reason that you're doing this course is to is to learn about the different stages and why you have them all right so that gives you a pretty good idea of uh, of what's required for the stage design and the next step in the next video we'll talk about um, the Gantt chart and the flow chart and what's required mm -hmm.